Hi, welcome back to another video. This is the kind of mottled red hard rubber that I flashed before. This is a safety pen. And I was able to take a look with my loop to kind of get at this inscription a little bit. And it's going to be hard with the camera, but I'll try. But it says, this is in quotation marks, my lord, Marc de Posse. So, poor French, but I looked it up and just basically says trademark. So this is a trademark pen called my lord. Um, what else can I say? And the nib, I think it's probably not original to this pen, but it just is a twin point number two, 14 carat made in New York nib. So probably not original, but looks like it's going to have a little bit of flexibility to it. So it's kind of nice and exciting, but this is a safety pen, um, safety and the fact that, um, it wasn't going to hopefully leak in your pocket. Um, and so basically just to kind of show you what we're expecting is we would take off the cap holding it upright we would turn the bottom knob extend it which is a kind of a cool feature of knowing like it's a mechanized pen and there's a cork seal down here that um, helps friction keep tight the little inner mechanism so that there should be a little bit of resistance as you turn it and that resistance is going to help keep the knob from turning when you apply some pressure and write and we'll see how this is supposed to work so that it, this doesn't backslide down the little twisted ebonite um, spiral on the inside but speaking of the spiral how are we going to get to see it we're going to have to take it apart and so let me just kind of jump in and we'll start to see what we can do but this is a cool little accommodation clip um, with some nice little filigree work on it. It looks like there's a little bit of a face on it. I like this guy. Um, there he is, a little bit of a face in there. But yeah, I like this. And the gold gold plating maybe, if it's gold plated. I don't know if it's brass or not, but it seems to hold up pretty well. But this is easy enough. We're just going to slide it off. Easy breezy. So we'll set that off to the side and have this little rag just so things don't go rolling. And here's what we're going to do. At the bottom here, there should be a joint. And this particular one, you can see it right there. And we're going to take down the nib a little bit to give us some room. And I pre-tested this one, so I knew it would unscrew but you might have some dried ink or something, just dirt and stuff. So a little bit of heat here might be necessary to get some of these apart. And you get to the point where you can just slip it out. So now you're basically empty barrel sleeve. Boom, put that over there. And it fell out, but this is the little ebonite rod that goes, that rides along let me see if I, oh, there you go. Rides along this spiral, spiral channel and helps guide, let's see if I can get, get it turning. Yeah. Helps guide this, I can't seem to hold it straight, along, there we go, I'll just do it this way. Helps guide it along and push it as you twist. This has a channel inside the barrel that it kind of rides along to keep it in place. And that is what kind of gives you the, the ability to extend and retract as this slides. It's just working that little rod up. And by the rod moving up, you extend the pen. So that piece tends to fall out quite easily. Um, so we're gonna set that off to the side and we'll focus on that in a minute. And this is just the rod with a little chamber at the top that con contains the feed as well as the nib and this one the nib actually kind of wiggles out on this guy there we go put him over there and this guy the feed was a little bit tight so I'm going to go ahead and just soak or use some heat so I don't want to twist or break this these ebonite pieces get, become very brittle over time so I'll just be a little bit gentle and if push comes to shove if it doesn't want to seem to come out I'll clean around it uh, scrub 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 put the nib back in and that'll just have to be what this guy is so we'll get to him later 
So here's going to be the scary part and the hard part, and really why to do these videos. So there's a, some variation in these bottom parts. There's like a Waterman method. I think this is what I would call it because you have a couple knockout pins. Um, sometimes there's pins in the connecting kind of threaded area or in here somewhere that is what's holding this spiraled ebonite piece in. And I think this is a good one to start with because you don't have to find anything hidden. You don't have to have any special uh, super needle sized tools to knock out any pin pins. But just know that this spiral ebonite has another shaft that's kind of going in through this. And so the trick is figuring out either, you know, online resources or just kind of looking around, how do I get that pin out? So this is nice because it has, I'll zoom in, a couple of friction points. So this is actually the end, this larger circle is the end of that ebonite rod. And then there's this little smaller pin right there that's really friction fitting it and holding it tight. So what we're really ultimately doing is ultimately doing is knocking out the ebonite rod. And so if I'm going to call it a knockout, I'm going to grab my knockout block. And I might have to move my setup just a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to find a place where it, it rests in there, so I'm not putting any pressure or tension on this. I'm going to find that where this is able to rest on the lip. And I've got plenty of space underneath, so it's way up there. And this is apparently my super multi-tool, this little pen tooling thing. So it has a nice little flat, narrow end. And I'm going to go ahead and put on an old sack. Because I'm, I don't. I mean, you could use a plastic piece. You could probably use a, um, a toothpick, but I'm going to use this and put it right on the big one, the, and do some light taps. And there, it's starting to move already. It just kind of push, it, just kind of push itself down. You can kind of see, hopefully. That I've already pushed. In. It's already indented in, so this little friction pin is still there, and I can actually, if I wanted to, I can go in and kind of do just like with the Schaefer sometimes, just kind of, now that it's moving, I can do something like that. But, I'm going to stick to my method, the one that I know, the one that I know works for me, at least on this particular pin and just finish knocking out a little bit and let it fall onto that. So I'm going to stick that in there and just very lightly it fell. Here we go. Both. So now we have the inner chamber. So another good reason to have this contained so that this little guy does not fall out. So this is my pin. This is the thing that was friction fitting the whole thing together. That little dude. Boom. So small. So I'd say have a little cup handy so you don't lose any of this stuff. And this is what we have left. Here's the raw that was in there have the kind of shiny buffed end that kind of comes out and that is it ebonite all the way so this is how we would um get it apart and so now we're going to turn our attention back to this because there should be two pieces right so this is what's holding everything to the pen and this is the knob you turn the knob comes right out just like that and so inside this little casing is where your seal is going to be. That's going to be the seal in which this rod is inserted um, and t turns in and also allows there to be a watertight seal, ink tight seal down here. And that's what this is going to give it friction. So to kind of resist any um, turning um, as you put pressure on the nib so that it want to slide back down and by sliding back down the spiral, 
turn this and unwind itself. So that's going to give you some friction so that you can put a little bit of force and right, actually right with the pen. And if we look inside, which hopefully you can see, there's a little something in there. And you can use a pick, you can use a Q-tip, you can use whatever. Maybe it's even already disintegrated, but I'm just going to go ahead and come back here and just push it out. And it's just a cork seal, just like that. And now we have a smooth inner barrel. Boom. And this is our crumbly cork seal. So we're going to have to replace that. We'll have a couple options. Um, either new cork, which, you know, maybe I'll try that, that method, just kind of finding the diameter of this, drilling out a hole in the cork, and then cutting a shape that would allow me to put it in here. Or, if you look around, we can kind of maybe go the shape around and find some kind of little plastic rubber washers that would be able to be fit into here and take the little ebonite rod and just kind of do a nice, hopefully long-lasting um, rubber seal. So I think we'll play around. Sorry about the focus. Not sure why, but it doesn't like focusing on white. But there. Let's move it back out. There we go. So that's it all taken apart. So that's easy peasy. I'm going to go ahead and um, protect my imprint. It's kind of faded, but I should try to protect what's there. And I'm just going to do my polishes. I'm going to use my micro mesh, my, you know, try the plastic and metal polishes on it to see if it takes out any other finer stuff. But um, red hard rubber, this mottled color, so I'm just, I, I won't hesitate to use any water on it. I'm worried about it being discolored. I might just take some light water on a toothbrush and just kind of dust this off. Um, and then lightly maybe use a little bit of the metal polish just to kind of see if there's anything. But I'm going to be very gentle and not do too much to this. And same here. And I think that's it. So I'll, I'll think about how I'm going to do the seal. And we'll come back when this is all cleaned up. And we'll kind of go that process and see how it goes. So I'll see you when I finally make a decision about this. Okay, welcome back. I have the barrel and everything cleaned off. And let me go ahead and just show you what we're working with. And it kind of came out really nicely. This is just working through the micro mesh. I went ahead and did the metal polish and my uh, micro polish that I've shown before from Anderson Pens. Just kind of get it shiny. This hasn't gotten any Renaissance wax and I don't think I will. I think I might try some mineral oil on this. And I know it's been advised to do that on the black and hard rubber. But for the red modeled kind of, you know, it's got the black rubber, it's got the red rubber. So I assume it would be a similar concept. But before I commit to either waxing or mineral oiling this, I'll do a little bit more research on the internet. But just kind of wanted to give a quick show of what it turned out so far. We even have the little bottom piece as well. And I've been a little bit industrious. Um, well, actually, before I do that, let me just show you how the rest of it did. So here's that little accommodation clip shined up very nicely. We have this New York Twin Point nib, number two, shined up very nicely. Mm -hmm. And I was able to get the feed out of the little casing carrier and it was just like stuck with, with ink. I soaked it and it came right out. Here's our little um, ebonite helix that's going to drive the whole mechanism. And for all these parts, I just kind of soap and water and really just kind of wash them off. I didn't do any polishing. I just made sure I got all the gunk off. Used a lot of Q-tips to kind of get into some of these areas, but, you know, being very careful because if you try to clean in here, which I did, you could put some torque and break this. And I went ahead and cleaned on the inside in here as well, just to really kind of clean things up, clean through that little gap. And I might have to do one more little rinse off. And of course, I got into the little channels of the feed as well. Kind of took that m m metal polish, the semichrome, really just scrubbed with a Q-tip in that area just to kind of get stuff out. And so what I've done in the meantime, and this is what I did today, was I took three little washers, and I got these things probably fr from a vent vintage pen company or vintagepen.com. I think it's the David Nishimura site. I think that's where I got these. But really what they are, are just these little rubber 
O-rings, and they come in various sizes, and I had an assortment because I think I was trying to, um, I had a little kick where I was trying to prepare some piston fillers, and rather than deal with cork, I was, I've seen that a lot of people used these things stacked up. Um, you just had to get the right size eventually. So I had a bunch of these laying around, and what I did was knowing that, let me take the bottom piece off, this is the packing chamber that we're trying to get into. Um, and if I have a little bit of a cute uh, toothpick left, I'm, I'm getting down into, there we go, about that deep of a chamber, part of which is going to be taken up by this little area going along. So I really had to stack up any somewhere close to that area. Um, and if I didn't get exactly that, I think that'd be okay. But I got the three of these. I think that's all that I had left. So this, this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna basically have stacked up in this area. So a little bit shy of the goal, but I think it should be okay. And if I had one more, I would do a fourth one, but I'm gonna go for the three to not hold up the video process. I, I can always come back, see how it works, and maybe do one more. So what I did, is knowing that this would be a set the setup. This rod would go back through the channel. I would have these stacked up at the bottom and then this capped off at top. So in here is my little chamber. And I really just stuck them on to this ebonite part of it. Because that's going to expand them, you know, this is, this is gonna be as they are expanded. So I want them expanded to fit as, as pushed out as they're going to be in this chamber. And then I simply took sandpaper, and this, I started out with 150, just to kind of rough shape it. And I got on the tip, and I really just kind of like worked it, worked it, worked it, worked it, worked it. Um, lots of retries. If I had calipers where I could actually do the internal diameter of this little section, I could then translate that to the outer diameter of this, and I could have just, you know, sanded, sanded, sanded until I got it down perfect, but I had to do a lot of sand it, kind of test it, put it apart, pull it back together, which I think in the long run works, but it also risks, you know, you doing more fiddly things and maybe breaking some of these delicate parts. So always careful to kind of grip this down away from the helix as I can, and when I had it in here and here I was doing things, I'm trying to grip it by this threaded section here. So I'm not really trying to put any pressure on this. And that was the most nerve wracking part about doing all this, like putting it on, taking it off, pushing it in, seeing how, how far down I can get this in. But I think I got to a point where it's snug, it's fit, and I think we can go ahead and get everything together. And so for that, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my wax because I want this to be waxed and running smoothly and fill up any gaps, but I think these should be tight little seals all in all. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. And actually, let me lie one more time. I'm gonna take my grease and put a good coat of grease on this. Then I'm gonna stick it up through here. I'm going to take additional grease and coat each washer. I'm going to put them in one at a time. So again, I'm trying to hold down here as much as I can and just kind of push it in. And I have my little toothpick and that's what's going to help me kind of push it all the way down into the chamber. If you have a, a something thinner, that's probably going to be even better, but this has worked so far. Take the next one. I'm going to be generous with my grease because I don't want any kind of friction. I don't want to put any weird pressures or torques on this as I'm packing. So I want this to be as easy as possible so I don't break this 100 year old pen. I'm just going to push it down there a little bit more, get it seated way down there, and we'll do the third one just like all the rest. I've got so much crease in my fingers right now. There we go. Push that down. Yeah, that just kind of pushes right into it. It does have a little bit of a, it, a little step off on the inside. So it is a slightly narrower on the deeper area than it is the upper area. 
just as you as you peer into it and I don't know if that's going to be the same for every single one but for this one that seems to be the case and then here's the other little part so as you notice let me wipe my fingers okay get some stuff out of the way so I can do some zooming in so let's see if this background will be good for zooming if you notice there is Ooh, that is so shiny up at the top here there is a little half moon shape that is going to correspond to the little half moon Ooh, divot that's now at the 12 o'clock position all right there hopefully you see it so those are which are going to line up hopefully you can see it right there the tip of my finger hopefully you can see that okay i'm going to go ahead and try to line those up grasping here at the most secure part not as little on the ebonite as i can i'm going to go ahead and pre-line up those two two slots and now it gets a bit dark i think it did a decent job Here's the here's the iffy bit, so I might have to actually there we go. Pushing everything all together, pushing in, and pretty good. So that's what I'm shooting for. I may fiddle around because I want that whole to those two half moons. Dang it, everything's so shiny now. To create kind of a hole. It's a little bit off. So I might have to undo and redo because I've got such like greasy hands and of course this is the little piece that's going to go in there this is the little friction piece that's supposed to hold everything tightly together and that is what I'm going to try to get in there as much as I can there we go yeah let's see that's pretty good. I'll see if I can work with that. Maybe I can get a toothpick in there just to kind of get a little bit better alignment. Just to kind of work it. But before I do any of this fiddly stuff, I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands, take a pause in the video, and get my hands degreased. Yeah, so I've gotten it lined up. I was able to do a little bit of just finagling with a toothpick that seemed to fit that hole pretty well and of course that hole in the ebonite rod is just a short little bit of a channel it's only drilled into like a little bit of that ebonite rod um, so let me go ahead and take a pause I'm gonna wash my hands degrease everything so I can hold on to it and not slip and mess things up so I'll be right back okay I am back and cleaned and so let's do Probably the scariest part or the hardest part because working with a small little piece that we had knocked out and I try to start it into the hole. Just kind of push it in, get it flush. And everything is now well set so we have a nice knob that turns it's tight it doesn't just freely spin and that should be a nice packed unit so let's go ahead and see if we can get the rest of it back together and that should be fairly straightforward tilt you up zoom back out i think that's what we got pay no attention to what's back here and what can we say let's go ahead and get the nib feed back in so nib and feed just as usual we're going to line them up we're going to take our little carrier and we're going to push that sucker in boom boom and actually I'm going to have to learn with you guys because I know I mean the the pin for being moved I don't think there's a specific orientation you need to um, have this because you know it'll wind out any way that it winds out 
Um, so let's go ahead and put this back into the helix. And then we're going to find a space where we can see that little hole peek through. We're going to take the longer pin, ebonite pin, and see if we can poke it through to catch it. And there we go. So, there's that. We're going to throw this guy back in, mining the pin. Oh, and let me show you, see if I can focus on it. There should be, I think I see it right at the top. I'll see if we can get the glare on it, but there are two channels. So that's where that pin is going to ride all along. So as we twist, it wants to get pushed up by the helix and that's going to carry the nib unit all the way forward. So it has a channel, it's just not rotating freely, it's kind of being pushed by the helix against that little rod and riding up those two little divots. So that's what we're gonna to shoot to line up. So I'm gonna have it at the up and down, so that's where, or let's go side to side so I don't drop it out. So I'm gonna say side to side. And it should kind of catch itself anyway. And boom, there we go. And then we're going to start that in. That's going to want to push up, so we'll pull it down. We'll retract it. As you can see, it retracted. And it's going to want to come back out. We shall retract again. Screw more. Retract again. And just keep repeating until you get it all the way in there. And actually, ooh, there's a good thunderstorm. I'm going to undo this for a second. Just because I put a little grease there. I want to do a little bit of extra grease down here. Just to make sure we have a good seal. There we go. And I'm running low on grease anyway, silicone grease. So just use up what I have. And then I need to order a little bit more. There we go. Just smear it there. And repeat the process. Yeah, and now I can't grip because I'm greasy. There we go. Okay, so that should do the pen itself. Let me wipe a little bit and just kind of see if we can predict if the pen is going to work. If I have a good enough seal at the bottom. So I'm going to extend it out and lo and behold, one little trick is to get that all the way extended up and then just tighten up against it so you know let me just say that again so i'm just about got this tightened in so i'm going to take it back just a little bit extend my nib all the way out and then tighten that down so i know this is extended i'm going to use that little bit of extra uh, pressure created by the the threads to make sure that pushes forward and that this is going to ultimately be secured at the front because this is going to be our seal to prevent any ink in this chamber from just dumping out. And then the second, the thing that's going to keep that seal is the pressure that we've made now with a repeat seal down here. The, the friction of that seal is going to keep the knob from being able to be turned and that little carrier slipped out, slipped back down a rotating um, helix, right? So if this is all the way out now, yeah, and I can turn this knob, although I'm greasy, without this little chamber turning, so that's good. They're independent of each other. I'm gonna extend it out and act like I'm gonna write. If I just kind of put some writing pressure, it doesn't want to push itself back. Put a little weight on it. I think that's going to make a good seal. So I imagine I'm going to have a success with this pen. So there we go. 
So I'm going to take it back down. Yeah, my seal did not open. It stayed tight. It's all the way down. Cap on. Beautiful accommodation clip, which will slip on now. Oh, and that was, that was very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get this wiped down, see if mineral oil is the right thing to use on this uh, modeled hard rubber. And we'll come back, we'll fill it, and I'll see if I can talk a little bit about safety pens um, and then see how this sucker writes. So uh, I'll see you in a little bit. Welcome back. So I took a day and I just kind of read up on safety pens and a few things. There's not a lot of like specific, specific details, but I think I got a little bit of something to talk about and really we're here to see the pen work. So let's just kind of get at it. And um, I don't know if I, I really showed the, showed the pen off last time. So let's just go ahead and take a look at it. And I remember saying that I was going to um, maybe figure out a polish, whether I can use my Renaissance wax or mineral oil or what have you. And I went onto a few forums trying to see what I could use, what was safe. And I think the mineral oil thing that I had talked about before was with the um, deoxidizing kit I have. Um, I can't think of the guy's name, but it's I think one of the more popular ones out there that he recommended mineral oil to clean off that deoxidizing goo. Um, and maybe that's where in my head I thought, oh, you're supposed to polish these with mineral oil, um, which I still think you can do um, because it's, you know, it's, it's a petroleum base, it's fairly inert, and it's probably a good idea or a good option for working with some of these black and hard rubber or now this model hard rubber um, kind of pen. So I haven't done anything yet. This really is still just the shine of my hand polishing. So just that, let me get rid of that white paper for a second. I really need a different paper, different pad. There we go. Wow. Um, so this is all really just hand polishing. You know, I did do the, the Simichrome at the end, as long as my, as well as my Anderson pens kind of micro finish, but I'm not sure that those added too, too much. But one of the great things about hard rubber is that it takes a shine really well. And a lot of people online, um, you know, they, talked about carnauba wax or whatever wax you wanted to use as long as you felt comfortable with it but a lot of them with their polishes they would just use a buffer wheel and a cloth and just work it and get such a super super shine out of it but this isn't bad for just um, a little bit of a hand polish and I see if I can catch the glare of, oh there it is I'm not sure you can probably see it a little bit I'm going to try to get you to read it, but there's still a little bit of an imprint there, but we'll come back. But this is my favorite part, this little smiling sun guy. I found another example of this particular pen, the My Lord pen. I mean, apparently um, these safeties were pretty popular in Europe, and France and Italy and Germany were big makers of them. And apparently the ones made in France were really all about this modeled hard rubber, be it red, be it black, be it whatever. But they were all about this, and the Italians were all about this with overlay on it. So theirs, theirs gets really uh, impressive with the gold and the silver and the cool overlays. So, I mean, this kind of like fits right in with the expectations of a French safety pen. Uh, so maybe at the end of this I will kind of throw on some Renaissance wax, um, but I'm not too worried about it. And a couple of things I did kind of learn, and it makes sense after I've done some polishing with these, but black and hard rubber and the red hard rubber, different little um, qualities to them. The black and hard rubber, you know, um, just over time, they all get brittle, but the black and hard rubber one is a little more resistant to... Um, abrasions and stuff apparently the red hard rubber is very soft compared to the black so you wind up maybe that's why these take polishes so well um, but I can tell when I do my micro mesh just doing the polishing it turns so red just like when you do a Parker dual fold I'm always impressed with how red my micro mesh and polishing pads get so the red ones are much softer so all the more reason if you do see an imprint or anything protect it because you can probably wipe out a good deal of it just because it's a red hard rubber but something to think about but let's go ahead and see if we can fill this guy up and i'll just chat about safety pens and let's zoom out there we go 
just for a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this lavender black, and they do say that you can use India inks with these because there's not, I mean, the only real thing you have is just the feed, um, channel for the feed, so you're not really gumming up or gunking up anything that's really meant to suck in or expel ink. So you could use India inks is what they said, and I debated it, but it's like, meh, I don't know. I'll just keep it for my dip pens that I use sometimes. But I'm gonna go ahead and take a little pipette. I got this one with the Wyvern kind of um, eye drop filler um, from some time ago. So I kind of use this for other pens as well. And I'm gonna, and there we go. I probably should have a little towel just in case I make a mistake because you know, I tend to do that. So I'm gonna put a little towel down and I've got my pen retracted and we'll see. I'll put it in there. See if I can tilt a little so I can get some light. I don't know how full this is. We'll just stop with that. I don't know how full or how much more room I have, but that was a pretty good eye drop full. So I will set this aside far away so I don't knock it off. And all that's left to do is extend that up. We have some nice inky drops on it. And hold our breaths and turn it upside down. <laughs> so we have a seal, so that's good. It is pushed up, up up against this tip enough so that it is holding in. And I did do a water test with this yesterday, just in preparation so that I didn't, you know, foolishly make a mess on camera. But let's go ahead and see how this baby writes. And I did check the tip, uh, it does have a little bit of tipping left. The alignments are good, so let's see if I can get it writing. You have no expectations. I don't really write with safeties all that much, so. And this is uh, probably not a, the original nib to this, so we'll see if there's any kind of nib feed discrepancy. But I'm getting a line, sometimes I lose it. And just to see if I did anything, I'll dip it back down in. I'll bring it back out and I won't wipe the tip. I'll just let it be. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit. But anyway, let's see if we can get your writing a little bit. And I might have to play around with the nib and feed on this just to see. Or maybe it takes time to soak in, I don't know. Oh, that's not good. Let's open up the tines, see if that lets some stuff flow in. Mm, I don't know about this. this. Let's do this crazy thing. Let's make sure it's really in there. Get some stuff in the feed. Okay. Okay, this should write just because it was in I shouldn't stop. Hmm. Okay, this is not as successful as I hoped it was going to be. The other thing I'm going to do is just see if I can top it up and see if that matters to do anything. It shouldn't because I'm holding it upside down and it should be contacting. Okay, that's that's a lot. That's, that's pretty good. That is two now. full syringes and that definitely came out with a lot more ink on it. Okay, let's just start writing real quick. So let's just say C 
safety fountain pens. The best I could find um, is it about the 1890s. They say the patents were in place to create one. And there are a couple of companies that one had the patents, one had the design, but nothing was really mass marketed. So the two companies I saw were Kaw, which I think this is the one that first really produced mass marketed safety pens that looked like this with the turning knob and the um, telescoping or the nib that comes out in her tracks. So that was the company I saw that got mentioned. And the other one, was the more non-leakable pen. And I have one off to the side, you probably saw it in the other, other videos, but uh, are there other clips, and that's the one I'm gonna do next. But this is the one that probably people say kinda created the safety pen or mass marketed the safety pen versus this one. I'm losing it again. And this is probably around to rethink this guy. Maybe I can take him apart because I didn't put glue. I just put some grease down here so I could take him apart. I can troubleshoot the feed and nib a little bit, which is what I think I'm going to do. Just to make sure those tines are opened up, make sure there's good seating, and we'll just go from there. But so about hard I get like a line and that is it. Let's see if I can press down and get some opening of the tines, but it might not even be there. I mean, it looks like it fits, but yeah, I have to think about this. Anyway, so let's just kind of, I'll just keep scribbling while I talk and maybe it'll start picking up. But um, about 1896 or so, uh, 1896 or so, the Moore Pen Company came out with their non leakables and then these were the fashion. I mean, these were good pens because they had a decent ink capacity there, and they kind of helped solve the problem of ink evaporation. So if you just had an eye drop filler, um, and you can even sense this with other pens too, I feel like it happens in my sacked pens, that there's a decent amount of evaporation um, for, of the ink from the nib. Oh, there we go, picking back up. Maybe, maybe just need to saturate and just kind of work its way through. But we'll see. Um, and over time, you just get this ink caked um, cap and you'd have wasted your ink. So this particular design that keeps just sloshing around in there, a cap that seals well, and they do have breather holes a little bit. I, like, there's a couple small one, one on each side. Um, but for some reason, these do not have the evaporation issue that other pens do. So it was good, and it kind of did the job for the 1900s, 19-teens, into the 1920s and 30s when they kind of mostly were, were phased out. And I think the heyday was probably 1900s, 19-teens um, for these things. And I think I saw that Waterman was one of the first that really got them super popular, popular in Europe especially. Um, and they had their patent for their... Um, self-propelling pen, probably 19, I want to say 1906, 1908. I should have written it down, but that was when they did theirs. And after about 1920s, 30s, apparently these, I mean, he had so many more options and these were phased out, but they were kind of kept around for artists because, you know, rather than have a dip pen, dip pen, dip pen, and to be able to use the nice nibs that you wanted, this was a good solution for them to always have a good supply of ink in their pen to do their, their drawings and whatnot. So the artists kind of kept these alive a little bit. But aside from my nib and feed issues, not being able to write, um, I'm actually fairly happy with this pen so far. I mean, it's it seems to have at least a decent ink capacity. I could probably throw a little bit more ink in there. Um, it's definitely got a great size. Um, I'm not gonna pull out, well, maybe I should because we have really nothing to talk about if this thing's not gonna write. Oh, yeah, my, my um, ruler is way, way off on the other side of my, um, my, my place, so I'm not going to worry about it just now. But as you can see, it definitely is large enough to fit my hand. Um, I'm going to guess this is probably 
four and a half to five inches just without the nib extended. So it's definitely a comfortable pen. It's a little on the, it's not super girthy, it's not super small, so it's very easy to hold. Um, I'm coming right up here to the, this is where the cap catches, uh, screws on, so I can definitely easy, easily hold it right behind, and I'm not getting ir any irritation. I have more than enough room to come back or go forward, and they did tend to make these capable, and that can also be a thing that helps you turn the knob. So that is a nice feature of these, that you can cap them, and the caps are small, so you're not really getting any added weight or anything. So negligible weight when you cap it, and just a good way to hang on to what to your cap. Um, what else am I thinking? Um, the seal is nice. This is the part that made me nervous to make sure that it's going to get pushed up enough, held tightly enough, but it looks like, just like it is designed to do, it is maintaining a good seal. And other than just, you know, the daily, you have to keep in mind how you are handling these pens. You need to keep them upright when you're um, retracting or extending the nib uh, with a cap on. I assume you could, like, they could do whatever you want to go up, down. That's the safety of it, right? You're not going to lose your ink. Um, I think it would be a cool everyday writer, but given the fragility of some of these model hard rubbers, or the hard rubbers in general, it might not be something I carry around, unless I know I'm gonna to go to, like, I'm gonna to go to a coffee shop. I'm just gonna write, and that's gonna be in control the whole time. I don't know if I wanna have it sloshing around or tumbling around in a backpack or a pen holder that's in my backpack or something like that, so. Um, I think they're still functional. I think there's a beauty to these that we've kind of forgotten. Oh, I can actually see the ink level. It's just down from the tip. So it's actually pretty good. I saw the uh, nib fully retract into it. But I like these. I'm really starting to get into collecting these and refur refurbishing them myself. So I imagine these will be a little bit more in my daily carries. Just, I mean, the artistry and the model and all the chasing patterns, I, I think they can be really good functional art. Um, and they, you can get a lot of enjoyment and long writing times out of them, probably. So, um, let me go ahead and shut this guy down, and we'll talk about what we're going to do next. And maybe if I um, work on the nib and feel like I've gotten to a better place with it, I will come back and just re-show the writing. But it looks like with the nib, I'm at least getting a little bit of flexibility. It looks like it is having a little bit of personality in there. But I'll come back once I figure that part out a little bit. But that's what you get for doing this cold, I guess. So, cap is on. I can throw it down. Beautiful. So let's go ahead and do the next one. I'll show you. I'll actually show you two. This is actually the more non-leakable. So I have a super long version, which is the one that we're going to work on. And this is one that I previously uh, restored. And I've done the water test, so I know it works. But this is my non-leakable pen. And rather than using the twisting um, mechanism, it's more of the push-pull, and you're just sliding your that same kind of long nib rod, I guess, through the seal. So same idea, just different mechanism. And this is one that I've not inked up yet, but it does hold water. Um, I've done my water test on it, so I know it's going to be at least a self-contained pen, but I need to do a little bit of nib work on this guy to kind of smooth out the tines and make sure they align well, so I haven't really tried to write with this one yet. But the reason I'm going to show you them both is because this one, I've already pre-taken it apart because I wanted to see if I could do it without breaking it, um, had a nib issue. Um, I may have shown it, I don't know, but the nib on this one, if I, I think I had it off to the side, yeah, um, was definitely broken. One time is just gone. So I'm either going to find another nib that would fit, or maybe just borrow this guy, put it on here, because this one with a larger barrel, I think it'd be much more fun to kind of start to write with this one. But they're exactly the same kind of mechanism, like this is just the big version of the small one. And 
they came apart exactly the same way. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this one bit by bit and we'll replace it. I think I'll do cork in this one, whereas I use the uh, rings, the rubber rings in this, I'll go ahead and do some cork in this guy and make it as true to form as I can. Um, this guy I did with the rings, so also I just don't have any rings left that I think are gonna fit it and I don't wanna file everything super all the way down. But we'll do cork with this one and I'll probably wind up doing a little bit of nib work trying to see if it'll flip over here and if not then I'll need to dig around to see what else I can find. But we're gonna do this version of a safety pin next. And that is it. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so let's do a little addendum. I was able to work on the pen a little bit, or at least the nib, I should say. And I think I had it figured out. I think I was, not think, but I, I was right in the fact that the tines just weren't allowing ink to flow through. So I was able to get it back apart. And all I really did was I took the nib out and I wanted to just laying it flat and pressing it down to kind of help open up and spread the tines a little bit. And then I just kind of messed around with the alignment, maybe pushing a tine in, maybe the other one, just to kind of fine tune it so that it wasn't quite a big gap, but it wasn't as tight as it was. And then I've been able to recheck the pen and I've been written with it, written with it for a few days and it seems to have fixed the problem. So it's pretty consistent now. And other than just maybe a little bit of just skipping every now and then, which I think might just be inherent to the nib, um, I think it's pretty good. So let's just go ahead and do a quick writing sample just to let you see what it is. And what shall I write? So I shall just write simple words. So let's go. Yep. As you can probably already see, and I'll, I'll zoom in in a second, actually, let me just go ahead and turn it real quick. It seems to have a little bit of, um, oops, oh, damn it, it's doing, the, it's doing the thing. There we go. It's got a little bit of character to it already. It kind of has some, just with very little pressure, it seems to have a little bit of opening uh, flex to it. I mean, that's a, a sideways stroke that comes down to, oops, not quite dry, downward stroke. So it, it's got a little bit of um, just automatic flexibility um, to it with very light pressure. So let me just go ahead and do my usual stuff. So let's see, let's write the sentence. Keeps up very nicely, and there's a lot of line variation in here from something very thin on this H upstroke to like a wider downstroke, um, all over the place. It's just kind of naturally springy without really even trying to do much. And you know, actually, I think it has more of an italic grind on it. It seems to be a little bit flatter at the top, but I guess if it has tipping material, that probably means it's more of a stub. But it does seem to have a flatter edge. So if I just go ahead and say, let's do some sideways strokes. Very narrow. As little pressure as I can put on it. Why? So I'm gonna say this is probably an italic nib. Maybe broad, maybe just a broad, because there is tipping, I think. I believe, yeah, there is ever so slightly some tipping on this one. Um, so let's go ahead and see. Let's see how flexible we can get this guy. So next to no pressure. We're going to increase it. That's a decent pressure. I don't really want to push it too much more than that. And it'll pick back up. So let's do a little fig figure eight. Put some pressure as we come down. And then we'll do the figure eight without any pressure. So just with the natural kind of flatness of the tip, you get some. But with the pressure, that really opens up. So I like this div. Once I figured out the tines need to be open, I think this is cool um, little New York nib. It's actually kind of nice. So let's see, we do some scribbling. Yeah, it's laying down. It's kind of a wet writer just for that effect. Yeah, and this of course is that lavender black. So maybe that's also a wetter ink, but the flow in this is quite nice. It's actually keeping up. And if I were to see if I can do some 
quickest writing. Seems to be doing pretty good. Some slightly scratchy reverse writing. I wouldn't really want to use that very much. And I think that's it. Do I do anything else? I kind of forget my usual routine. But I'm liking this nib. It's actually quite springy, fun to write with. Of course, you've got to write your name because that's how you know to write the best. That one is going to have the most character because that's what your body knows how to do. So let me go ahead and put this back down, cap this sucker, and let you see my handiwork. So overall, pretty good pen. I like it. Once I got the tines figured out, it's got a little bit of um, italic quality to it. It's also got some flexibility with the italic writing, so you can really get the good line variation with a little pressure to moderate pressure. And I probably could have pushed it more, but I didn't really want to. And you get some fanciful kind of um, line work there. So definitely something you could do some calligraphy with and even just having fun with it without really concentrating on trying to do, you know, downward pressure, no pressure on the side strokes. You do get some character just signing your name. So overall, this New York nib on this safety fountain pen is pretty darn fun. Um, so that's it. I'll keep this one short and thanks for sticking around. We will see you with the next video.